Welcome to the urban mine. There's no hole in the ground or tailings. These minerals are coming from a new source, electric car batteries. And that's it. That's very cool. Kind of looks like dirt, but... Kind of looks like dirt. Guarantee you it's not dirt. That dark, shiny material is called black mass. It's a concoction of minerals made from old or defective batteries that have been shredded and broken down. Black mass is the bread and butter of Lycycle, a Canadian battery recycler that wants to make sure the precious minerals and batteries don't go to waste. So how many batteries get recycled at this facility? It's 5,000 tons per year. It's a lot of batteries. It's a lot of batteries. Some days were 100% consumer batteries, some days were 100% EV batteries. Daniel Demers is the plant manager here at Lycycle's facility in Kingston, Ontario. He gave us a close-up look at how the recycling process works. So are these EV batteries behind us? That's right. This is a skid of modules. In an EV car, the entire bottom of the car would be full of these. We take off the bits and pieces that, uh, that we don't want to shred, and then we lift it up onto the conveyor and send it on its merry way up into the shredder. The lithium ion battery recycling industry, which barely existed a few years ago, is now booming, backed by federal incentives and big investments from car manufacturers. When we talk about electric vehicles, what we're really talking about that's new is batteries. Evan Pivnik researches what a future North American battery supply chain could look like, from mining to manufacturing to recycling. He's with Clean Energy Canada, a think tank focused on climate and the energy transition. There really hasn't been a change of this scale since the last time we moved from the horse and buggy uh, to the original combustion engine, which you know was a process that took over 100 years. We're trying to get there in just a couple decades. 20 million passenger EVs are on the road today. And while that's a small fraction of the global fleet, there could be 10 times that amount by 2030. Countries, including Canada, have set ambitious targets for all new car sales to be zero emission by the end of the next decade, leaving car manufacturers scrambling to keep up with demand, faced with the task of reimagining their fleets and supply chains. You've got a huge reduction in the number of parts that are actually needed, but suddenly you need to bring in all these other materials that go into batteries. Lithium, cobalt, nickel, graphite, and manganese are crucial for these new batteries. The global race for minerals has begun, but you can't open a mine overnight. Mines take a long time to build in most countries, so we've got this supply and demand crunch that's being forecast. That's made lithium one of the world's hottest commodities. It's one of the minerals expected to be in short supply by 2030. There's a consensus that more mining will be necessary to decarbonize global transport. But long term, even if we could mine indefinitely, there's the question of whether we should. Mineral extraction comes with heavy environmental and human costs. Are we going to be able to get enough lithium into these battery supply chains to build the batteries we need to, to run the vehicles? That's where recycling comes in. Starting in 2030, the first wave of electric vehicle batteries are expected to reach their end of life. Part of the solution to this supply problem lies in what happens to those EV batteries when they run out of juice. And I remember when we started, people would say, hey, why are you like even recovering lithium. Lithium is the most valuable component now of those batteries. Before starting Lycycle, Ajay Kochar worked in battery manufacturing as an engineer. He watched as lithium ion became the most popular battery chemistry, and then started looking into whether any recyclers were recovering lithium. And to our dismay, we found that you actually can't recover lithium through these traditional approaches, which tend to burn off materials that they don't want. So that was really an aha moment for us. Lycycle doesn't just take in EV batteries. It also recycles battery manufacturing scrap and consumer products like laptops, tools, and cell phones. But the company is readying itself for a future where electric vehicles rule the roads. At this facility, the first part of the recycling process takes place, shredding and separating. 
comes off the conveyor belt, gets submerged in the solution, and then goes through the shredder. That's right. And then what comes out of the shredder? Three primary components, floating plastics, shredded metals, and our black mass. So the black mass, that's what goes into your future batteries. Right now, Lifecycle's black mass is sold to outside vendors. But later this year, they will open a new plant in upstate New York. It's there that they'll use a new chemical process to recover the various minerals from the black mass, including lithium. That plant, which they call the hub, will become one of the first facilities of its kind in North America. Think of it as urban mining. And how much are you able to reuse from those batteries that you're recycling? So we're getting up to 95% uh, recoverable material from those batteries. Ajay says Lifecycle's process is greener and cheaper than traditional metals recycling. It's not resource intensive and produces little waste. But there are other complexities to consider. Collection and transportation are difficult and expensive. EV batteries are heavy and are classified as hazardous goods since they retain a significant charge. Though the biggest challenge battery recyclers say they face is getting their hands on a consistent supply. Electric vehicle batteries are lasting longer than expected, but Lifecycle and others remain confident that come 2030, there will be more than enough batteries to go around. Personally, I see it increasing. I mean, uh, this is the way everything is going. You're going to need to build more of these, if anything, to, to kind of keep up with demand. I would expect, yes. And you said you come from the mining world previous to this. Yeah, I do. Uh, why did you become involved with recycling? I like the idea of being more part of the solution, and mining always has its risks. And mining always has its environmental hazards. Uh, the environmental footprint here is very low, and uh, it's very appealing to me. Lifecycle is on its way to being a global leader in battery recycling, expanding its reach across the U.S. and Europe. And its competitors here in Canada are not far behind. So as we see electric vehicle demand explode and you know all of the different mines that are going to need to be stood up, there's a really big desire to see recycling play a larger and larger role. How quickly recycling is able to feed in a sizable share of critical minerals, that's a little bit unknown. Battery recycling has the potential to solve multiple problems at once. With a new stream of battery-grade materials coming from recyclers, it could reduce the need for mining and all the impacts that come along with it. And because recycling is generally cheaper than mining, it could reduce the cost of batteries, most of which are made in China. That, though, has been getting challenged as sort of the geopolitical climate we now live in starts to see changes where the lowest cost producer is no longer the only thing that matters. That's what sparked a massive push to bring battery making home to North America. New battery plants are popping up across the U.S. and Canada, giving recyclers the market they need to thrive. This solves the problem, gets it out of the landfill, gets it back into industry, gets it back into your next device.